Happy New Year, family and friends. So let's read Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not of evil, to give you a hope, to give you a future and a hope. From the Living Bible. But I would like, aside from this verse, I would like to share with you. Um, so what is the year today, Sam Sam? Year 2024, right? And so we read Psalms 24, right? Because it's year 2024. Let's read. Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains. So previously, I was thinking na, ano, actually naaral natin to, di ba? Na, um, because of the cross of Jesus Christ, the dominion was given to us. So the earth is the Lord's. The earth is your Abba's, right? And because Abba is your father, and when he gave Jesus to you, you have everything. So the earth is, you have dominion over the earth and all it contains. So we declare that in 2024, there's not going to be any more war, diba? It's going to be a year of um, overflow, a year of abundance, a year of bounty, right? For us, his children, for this family. The world and those who live in it. So lahat ng tao sa kanya, no? For he has founded it upon the seas and is and established it upon the rivers. Can mamaya tack this in uh, tack this word in because uh, we're going to discuss rivers later. So and then verse three, who may ascend unto the hill of the Lord, and who may stand in his holy place? One who has clean hands and pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to deceit, and has not sworn deceitfully, he will receive a blessing from the Lord. Remember that. Apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, apart from the right is healed, but because Christ is in us and we are in him, we can ascend to the hill of the Lord and receive the blessing. And and, and actually it further says, and righteousness from the from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him. This is us. The generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, even Jacob. Even Jacob, di ba? Bakit kaya hindi Israel? Di ba yung Jacob ang ibig sabihin nun, Lex, ano, uh, schemer? Even, even those who are not perfect, right? Even those who are not perfect. Lift up your ha- heads, you gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, and lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. So inulit-ulit, ano? So ang sabi nga ni Lord, no? lift up your heads. Lift up your heads, you gates, and lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of armies. He is the king of glory. So for the year 2024, the king of glory the King of Glory who is in you is going to be revealed. So ito yung parang essence din nung ano, Vision, Vision Sunday dun sa New Life the Fourth. So for the year 2024, before we go into chapter 12, let us be encouraged to live 2024 from this wonderful space of permanence of, of, of us being made the righteousness of God in Christ on a daily basis where you know that you are that you are known and love because you have a heavenly father and you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear because his presence is in you. So he said in John 10, 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And his tender compassion toward you and peace and love be multiplied to you in Jude 1 and 2, the faith translation, because... Because it is finished. Hallelujah. So now we go to chapter 12, Sermon 12 of um, Christ the Healer, the book by Pastor Bosworth, God's Garden. So I'm intrigued by the title. No? Because after the full life di ba, from the last chapter, now we come to the God's Garden. What is God's Garden? What is the original garden? Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. You know, but before that, you know what is this? It looks like a garden, di ba? This, 
is a small part of a single cell in us, it looks like a beautiful garden. Oh, di ba? How wonderful! How wonderfully created you are. It is actually only 3D cryo transmission electron microscopy tomography with the, with the color added with the photo editing program, but very well done. In reality, no one has ever seen a living cell, not even an electron microscope, since the preparation techniques kill the cell. But the cryo techniques come very close, each like a micro factory complete its own transport and expert system. So it looks like a garden, no? Each cell of your body, it looks like this. Ganda, no? Hallelujah. So the first Adam, when he was in deep sleep, when some of him was given up for Eve, but the last Adam was wide awake when he gave, when he gave all of himself up for us. So, so this is how, the, the, the first time it happened in the garden. No? And the second time, actually, it started in the Garden of Gethsemane. So we're talking about gardens. So in Genesis 1, God created everything and it was good. Then he made mankind in his image and likeness, male and female. Over all of this, he declared it, it is very good. Then in Genesis 2.8, he planted a garden in Eden and placed man there. In Hebrew, you know what the meaning of Eden is? Flex, what's the meaning of Eden? It means delight, pleasure, and luxury. So child of God, from the foundation of the world, from the very beginning, his will for you and is to be planted in delight, pleasure, and luxury. Oh, ganda no. So, in Genesis 2, 10 to, 10 to, 10 to 12. Now a river. Kanina, di ba yung river? Dun sa Psalms 24. Went out of Eden to water the garden. And what does the river represent? The Holy Spirit, right? From there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is one which skirts the whole of Havilah where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bidilium and onyx stone are there. So, a river flowed from Eden and separated into four separate rivers. The name of the four rivers were Pishon, Gihon, Hidikel, and Euphrates. Pishon, listen to this, means increase or full flowing, abundance. Gihon means bursting forth or gushing overflow. Hidikel or Tigris means swift or darting. Actually, a word picture of a swift arrow in flight. And it means purpose. Euphrates means good, bountiful, fruitful, goodness, and fruitfulness. This is, this is the original design child of God. Hallelujah. The river, which is the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit, as it flows through the land of our lives, the land of our lives, it's able to open up that land and bring out the gold there, the treasure in us that is the life of Christ. And a sweet fragrance comes forth from our lives as the treasure is drawn out from the, out of the Spirit of the Lord, out of the Spirit of God. We have so much treasure in us. Who is the treasure in us, Sam? Jesus, right? And as the river flows, we are going to be astonished at the treasure and the fragrance that comes forth out of our lives. Hallelujah. So, and in fact, in John 7, 37, 39, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers again of living water. Hallelujah. But he spoke concerning the spirit. This is where he placed you and I. This is where he placed man, in a delightful, pleasureful, luxurious place. And out of his spirit, the river, out of our co-union, flows abundance, overflow, purpose, goodness, and fruitfulness. In fact, in Psalms 36 verse 8, talking about the loving kindness of the Lord toward humanity, they drink their fill of the abundance of your house and you give them to drink the rivers, the river of your delights. How good our, our, our God is. And He wants us to experience this because it is ours, because of the finished work of the, of the cross. 
But religion and philosophy attributes the desire for pleasure to the sinful nature. But truth is where, where is we were designed for pleasure. We were not designed for lack, toil, and curse of fallen world. And we can only find pleasure, we can only find pleasure or Eden where he has planted us. Where, where, where are we planted? In Christ. Ephesians 1.4 from before the foundations of the world, he chose us, planted us in Christ. Mark 16, 19, after the Lord Jesus has spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So where are you, child of God? In Christ. You are actually seated at the right hand of God. Dominion over all the earth. Hallelujah. And he also, uh, back to the by garden, huh? he also plays in the garden of delight, in the garden of pleasure, two trees, a tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life is also mentioned in Revelation 22. It was on the either side of the river of life that flowed from the throne of God. And it continually bore fruit and its leaves were healing for the nations. There was no more curse, but the throne of grace of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants will serve him. Actually, in Greek, it says his servants will worship him. And they will see his face. Face to face with you. Face to face. Kanina yun yung kanta, no? In his presence, you are whole. In his presence, you are complete. In his presence is your co-union. His name will be on your foreheads. Hallelujah, and there will be not there will not be night, nor need of a lamp or the light of the sun, because the Lord will enlighten, shine upon you, and you will reign, rule forever and ever. What a beautiful picture of us in Christ. Hallelujah. So there, there's no need to fear, right? Hallelujah. So now the quantum physics of healing, wholeness. God is showing scientists how he does things and those who have an ear, those who have ears to hear receive the benefit those who are listening it was an invitation when the when the lord said oh pag nanghihina ka what is the answer the joy of the lord is your strength the joy of the lord is your strength you know what is this Lex, tina mo you know what is this this one this is actually the picture, a picture of a leaf. Yung inside niya. And you know, you know how it looks like there? They are smiling. So this is from Annette Biggers. This is a blade of grass. So everybody, yung mga leaves nga natutuwa oh. Joy is one third of God's kingdom. Diba? Right? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Hallelujah. So, Si, si Annette Biggers, taga ano siya, Bethel. Remember, we went to Bethel. In the healing rooms, we don't pray for healing. We release joy, sabi niya. Sabi niya, ito ha. We don't pray for joy. We give what we already have. Which is usually a lot since for an hour, the team has worshipped and turned our attention to the Lord. This happens before our guests arrive. When we invite our guests into joy with us, miracles happen. So they are actually good joy givers. We don't have to say clever prayers or do the charismaniac or pentehostile things like we see on TV. We just get to invite them into the tangible, real presence of God. And he does all the work. It's not hard to help someone to receive a healing miracle. The only blockage seems to be doubt that has turned into walls of offense towards the goodness of God. The presence of joy is our best weapon. Even grass seems to get it, sabi niya. Ha, ha, ha. All of creation understands and hears the voice of its creator. They are waiting for man to be awakened to the truth, to discover it again and again and speak the language that gives life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in Genesis 3.24, balik tayo dun sa Genesis ha. He drove out the man and stationed cherubim on the east side of the Garden of Eden along with the whirling sword of flame to guard the way to the tree of life. It says, God set cherubim east set cherubim east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming whirling sword to guard the way to the tree of life. Diba? Alam natin to. Pati tinignan ko sa interlinear, na intriga ako eh. 
Tingnan nyo ha. He drove. Anong nakikita nyo? Aleph Tab. He drove Aleph Tab. Kasama yung man. And he placed to the east the Garden of Eden, Aleph Tab. And cherubim and the flame, again, Aleph Tab. Hallelujah. So what does this mean? In between the word cherubim and a flaming whirling sword is Aleph Tab. Aleph Tab in Hebrew is in the equivalent Alpha and Omega in Greek, the beginning and the end. It is Jesus who is the beginning and the end. And in the ancient Hebrew, the picture language is the strength or the power of the cross. One translation I read said the cherubim and the blazing one connecting Aleph Tab to the flaming whirling sword. It means Aleph Tab is the blazing one. So what does it mean? The root word flame is authority contained. Over and the word whirling is the act of overturning something. It is to turn something upside down to pour out its contents. And this cherubim and sword or the blazing one were to guard the way to the tree of life. The word guard is a kal infinitive construct with the lamed prefix expressing something temporal. And right before the word way is another alaf tab. In, the, in other words, the guarding of the tree of life was temporary. So therefore, alaf tabs in this verse. What a beautiful promise of redemption that would come eventually in Christ. He is the blazing one. His authority was contained until the time appointed by the Father when he would come to take on flesh and finish in time and space what was finished before the world's foundation or before the fall, completely removing all that hindered us from walking as divine son. In the tree of life, he himself took up residence in us. Residence in us. So we are planted in him. So verse 23 says that they were cast out of Eden. Specifically, it says they were cast out of the east of Eden. Not north, not south, not, not west. East in Hebrew is like our north star. It orients you. It gives you the true direction. So all Adam had to do was to look to the east, look to Eden, look to the beginning to get his bearings when things are getting complicated. So what to do when things are getting complicated in your life? Look to the east. Look to the true, true look to the north star. When he needed a reminder of his fix of his of his source and origin, it would be his true north, his fixed point in a world that has spun out of control. A reminder of what was spoken from the first, from the very first, they were that he was still a son made in the image and likeness of Abba. Hallelujah. So and so God went with Adam and Eve out of the garden. What did he do? He kept reaching out and breathing out his love on them, even as mankind began to digress more and more away from what was true in their oneness with God. David said, in fact, David said, if you ascend to the heavens, God is there. Or to the hell's depths, he's still there. God was always there pursuing them, pursuing you and I in his love. Refusing to let us go, no matter how far we've turned away from him. Even if mankind forgot who they were, God knew. He knew that they were his sons, would come from him, and would one day be reconciled to him. Oh, the joy that must, must have exploded from his heart when the fullness of time had come. His mind, his heart has always been on his beloved mankind. There was never any separation between God and man except in man's imagination. So what is the reason, so now going at, connecting it, uh, what is the reason why Jesus cursed the fig tree in Mark 11? It says he was hungry as he came out of Bethany. Bethany means house of figs or house of affliction. You and I are not in Bethany. We are in Eden, right? We are in Christ. Adam's nakedness, Erom, spoke of affliction, hunger, famine, and neediness. It says he saw the fig tree from afar. So the fig tree is a representation of the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh. Did Jesus see the fig leaves and it stirred within him the remembrance of Adam and Eve's perceived nakedness after eating from the tree? It says he cursed it. May no one ever eat partake of your fruit again. So the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't want you to partake of the knowledge of good and evil. What is this? What is this? The law. Right? And in his death, he put the axe to the root of the trees 
of sin and death and threw them into the fire. Jesus completely undid all of Adam's disobedience. He abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Hallelujah. Then God placed man in the garden and walked with him in the cool of the day in the spirit realm. In Genesis 2.8, balik tayo ha. Mankind's experience in life was always to be wholeness. His entire whole, including your physical body, never lacking anything. His experience was to always be a cool of a day of the day, walking with your Abba all the time. Man experience in life that he was designed for was not to include sickness, disease, fear, poverty, addiction, or lack of any kind. So ito discuss natin last week, right? So the more we meditate and and meditate on and grow in these truths of of the finished work the less and less will be our experience of sickness. Diba? I, I told you that I got, uh, I experienced the flu last Christmas. Because notice I didn't say we, I, ha, I, I have or I had the flu because we only have the life of God in our bodies. We simply experienced something that was presenting itself as contrary to the life that is already in you. So why did I get sick? What did I do? Nothing. So those questions have to be eliminated from our thinking. It is about what it's not about what we do or don't do. It's about what he has done. It is it's about what he did. So toss out that question and simply rest your body and mind. Conversations, importante, 'di ba? Homologyo. It's flu season. Oh, yeah, no. Kaya ano, madali magkasakit. It's because of the weather and we pass it to each other. No. My life doesn't have the flu seasons. The weather doesn't determine my health. Number three, was it COVID? I don't know and I don't care. I didn't Google the COVID symptoms. I didn't go get go get tested. That's my opinion. But please know that there's never any condemnation in Christ. Be led of the Spirit and do what He says is beneficial for you. Because every good and perfect gift, including doctors and hospitals and medicine, is from the Father. And while you do those things, continue to grow in your understanding that he has 100% completely cut you off from all sicknesses and diseases. Is sickness normal? No, it's not your identity. You are completely 100% cut off from it. Your identity is healed. Your identity is whole. The flu or sickness is not your new normal. So don't expect to ever happen, ever happen again. In fact, Let me say that a bit stronger. I will never be sick another day in my life. Why? Because of the impossible sea of blood and the life of God that pulses through my body. In Romans 8, 11, right? The same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So what did I do to feel better? Nothing. I simply rested in what I know, that it is finished by his stripes. I am healed. I didn't focus and worry about whether it would get worse. I rested in what I know that the life of Jesus Christ is always manifest in my body and I always recover because he always leads me in triumph. Then I rested my body and mind. We are not the sick trying to get healed. Our position are in, hasn't changed no matter what we may be going through. So, child of God, nothing can take place, nothing can take the place of the seed. Who is the seed? It is a who. It's not your giving, ah. Eh? Kasi madalas mo maririnig na, oh, magplant ka ng seed kasi ano, ababalikan sa'yo. Ah, ano na yan? Law na yon <laughs> Karma ang ibig sabihin nun. Nothing can take the place of the seed. Who is the seed? The Lord Jesus. Not even your prayer. Prayer is actually, the role of prayer is to till the soil. Prayer is not the seed. The word is the seed. The only purpose, where, where is, where's the only purpose of God's seed, God's promises is their fulfillment. Nothing can take the place of the seed, not even prayer. So we should all treat every promise of God, every promise God has made to us exactly as Abraham treated God's promises to him. The seed is the word. So say what God says about you. Confession. We grew up spiritually in the word of faith teachings that said like this. Ako nagkaroon ako metanoia actually kahapon. Palagi ko ito sinasabi dati pero hindi na ngayon. We don't deny its existence. We just deny its right and ability to dominate us. But actually, let's deny its existence because Jesus completely destroyed sin and death, including sicknesses, diseases, lack, etc. 
So I choose to give it no thought. Diba? To deny its very existence. Something destroyed no longer exists. Therefore, it shouldn't even exist in my thinking, in our thinking. In Hebrews 10.2, this is very important. The worshippers, once purged, should have no more consciousness of sins. Should have no more consciousness of sickness. No more consciousness or consciousness. Conscience has its synonym, which are awareness, care, recognition, cognizance, or knowledge, concern, heed, mindfulness, realization, and regard. I am to have none of that about sin or sickness. And if I am to have no consciousness of sin, then I'm also not concerned, not to concern myself with what came as a result of sin, sickness, disease, lack, poverty, death, etc. So a response to those things is simply no. It's not even allowed access to our thought. Thought life, just say no. So what we choose to think about is vital. It's a pivotal factor in walking in wholeness in every area of our life. In Proverbs, Sam, in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, tells us that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So your experience in life is connected to what you, to what and how you think. The word thinks is the word sha'ar in Hebrew. So kung ano yung pinapapasok mo? Meaning to reason, to calculate, to estimate. It also means gatekeeper. Hmm. So we are the gatekeepers of our lives. What we allow into our hearts, what we choose to reason or think about, will work itself out into our experience. Because what we think about will eventually come out of our mouths. In Matthew 12, 34, tells us that our, out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouths speak. Our words are an overflow of our hearts. And Proverbs 18, 21 tells us life and death are in the power of the tongue. Our words are powerful. The word for co-speaking with God is homologio, as we've learned. It means to speak the same, to agree with. It is for, it is from two words, homo, meaning meaning with and lego, meaning to speak to, uh, to a conclusion and express thoughts of the Father. It is to be of one mind. It is also in Hebrew, meaning to praise and celebrate. That's why when we are worshiping the Lord, which is very important, when we are praising and worshiping, when we are singing, it is actually confession of faith. And praise means to tell his story. So yung mga worship leader dyan, si Jem Jem. So finish. Go speak with God. Speak forth his conclusion. He is the health of your body. He is the source of your life. You are fully redeemed, fully whole, fully full of the Godhead. Now, not someday. Say what he says. It is finished. One of God's favorite conversations is about healing and wholeness. In fact, one of the first conversations he had with Israel after redeeming them from Egypt was about healing. He told them that he was their healer, their wholeness. So start talking about the finished work of healing and wholeness with others or even just with yourself and watch your body begin experiencing the health and wholeness that is already yours in Christ. So, Balik tayo dun sa ano, and, and I'm winding down. The joy of the Lord is your strength when you are feeling bleh. In Nehemiah 8 verse 10, what it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy. Joy is to abound. To abound. Joy is not the same thing as happiness. They are vastly different words. Happiness is from the Middle English word meaning hap or chance. Based on outward happenstances. Joy comes from the Middle English, from the French Anglo word joy, from rejoice. The Apostle Paul thought it was so important to rejoice that he felt the need to repeat it twice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. In fact, Paul talks about joy at least six ta 16 times in the four chapters of Philippians. And King David also exhorts us to serve the Lord with joy. In Psalm 100 verse 2, he says, serve the Lord with joy. Come before him with a joyful shout. This exhortation wasn't born out of happy circumstances. Did you know that? He was at the time hiding in a cave, exiled from his throne, having barely escaped from the murderous intention, intentions of his power-hungry son, Absalom. Absalom. What a rough set of circumstances. And yet, David, 
chose this moment to compose a psalm of rejoicing. So, child of God, get into his presence and let him fill you with his joy. Let it strengthen you, causing you to superabound with hope and that joy will break down any barriers in your life. Joy is a deep down confidence that all is well, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the difficulty, no matter what the problem. The Jewish sages have a saying, Simcha poritz heder. Joy breaks all barriers. Hallelujah. Di ba meron kanta? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, si ba you're confessing? Joy is a gift from God that was put joy in my heart. The Greek word for joy is kara. It's a word related to grace. There is grace for joy available for us. We need only spend time in His presence to be full of joy. So today, rejoice. Choose joy, whether your circumstances are joyful or not. In fact, there's a kid's song. Ito, ang ganda nito, this will blow your socks off. Joy is the flag that flies on the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. Diba? Tapos, yung ano doon, yung last, when the king is in residence there. Fly it high in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. Fly it high in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. So again, it speaks of union, right? The Lord's presence is in you and, is in you and that's why you can be joyful. So that, my dear family, is chapter 12. Let 2024 be the j- most joyous year ever for this family. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.